Hello and welcome back to Nerds App. Today we're going to be taking a look at the EcoFlow Delta 2 portable power station alongside the EcoFlow 220 watt bifacial solar panel. We'll start with a quick unboxing of both so you can see exactly what's included right out of the box. I'll walk you through the EcoFlow app to explore its features and functionality. And finally, we'll put both the Delta 2 and the solar panel to the test to see if they live up to the hype. Okay, so starting with the Delta 2, in the box you get the instruction manual, some foam padding, and the unit itself. You also get this accessories box, and inside you get a DC charging cable, a car charging cable, and a mains charging cable. Moving on to the solar panel. You get the solar panel itself in this case, which we'll look at later. These carabiner clips which are used for attaching the solar panel to the stand, the cable for connecting your solar panel to the Delta, and an instruction manual. Okay, so here is the EcoFlow Delta 2 in its full glory. First impressions are build quality is very good, it feels really solid. You've got these nice solid handles on the top. It's actually a little bit smaller than I was expecting, which was a pleasant surprise. Here it is next to a standard size 330ml can just for reference. So let's talk specs and then we can put it through its paces. So it's got one kilowatt of capacity and that's extendable up to three kilowatts using the extra batteries from EcoFlow. It has a 1,800 watt output, which can be boosted up to 2,400 watts, which should be enough to power pretty much anything around the home. And we'll test that out later. EcoFlow are claiming super fast wall charging. So that's zero to 80% in 50 minutes. And there are multiple other ways of charging this as well which we'll get into a little bit later. So looking at the front of the unit, we've got four USB-A ports, two of those are standard charging and these two are labeled fast charge. We have two USB-C charging ports rated at 100 watts each. So that should be plenty for charging things like laptops and things like that. We've got two power buttons on the front. This is the main one that turns on the whole unit and this one here turns on these ports here, which is why you've got that box around them there. Looking at the side of the unit, we have this port here, which is labeled extra battery port. And that, as it says, is for connecting the extendable batteries. So that's up to a total of three kilowatt hours, if you wish. Looking at the back of the unit, we've got four AC outputs. I'm in the UK, so these are 230, 240 volts, but obviously that will depend on the region that you buy this from. Under this flap, you've got the charging port for the solar panel or the car charger. You've got the mains charging port and you've got your overload protection switch as well. Looking at the bottom, this is where you've got your 12 volt output. So you've got some DC connectors there. You've got an individual power button here. And then you've got your standard 12 volt output port here behind this. So what some people might know is your cigarette lighter port. Same as on the front, these individual output methods can be controlled by the power switches here. So we've got an AC on and off here and a 12 volt on and off there. And there's nothing to show on this side other than the EcoFlow logo. So out of the box, this thing should come with around 30% charge. Let's turn it on and see. There we go, 26%. So I'm going to connect that up to the EcoFlow app, which allows us to see lots of stats and get it fully charged. So whilst we're waiting for that to fully charge, I thought we could just take a quick look at some of the optional accessories for both the solar panel and the battery. And then we can have a quick look at the EcoFlow app. So what we're looking at here is some suction cups for the solar panel. And what these allow you to do is to attach the solar panel to something like a car window or a van window, um, just if it's not convenient to set the stand up. So I've not got around to using these yet, but I'm sure we'll be useful at some point. These are quite expensive on the EcoFlow website, I think, but if you shop around a little bit like I did, you should be able to find them cheaper from elsewhere. Another accessory worth considering is the EcoFlow waterproof case for the Delta battery. Now I found this to be absolutely brilliant, really useful. It'll obviously protect the battery from scuffs and scratches and things like that, which is quite important to me as I paid quite a lot of money for it. Um, it has this zip up pocket at the top where I can just keep 
all of the cables handy so the solar charging cable mains charging cable things like that it has a window on the front so you can see the screen through there and it just gives me confidence when i leave the battery outside that it's not going to get damaged by rain so now it's time to take a look at the ecoflow app so once you connect it up you'll have a choice of home page style i like this one so let's go with that and then it should connect to your battery and show you the status. Let's run through some of the settings and features. So from the home screen of the app, you can see the name of the device and how it's connected. So in this instance, it's connected using Wi-Fi. You can see how long there is left for the device to charge, battery percentage, the input wattage, which is changeable, and I'll show you that setting in a moment, and the method of charge as well, so solar or AC. If we go into the settings cog here, you can change the name of the device. You can set up device sharing, which allows you to share the device with other users so they can configure it from their EcoFlow app. You can turn the beep on and off, and there's a energy management menu as well. So in here, you can choose the maximum charge of the device. So if you wanted to prolong the life of the battery, you could perhaps set that to 80%. And there's this backup reserve option, which is if you're charging your device on both solar and AC, for example, you can choose at which point it switches between those two. That's not something that I'll be using though. So here's the maximum charging speed. So you have some predefined ones, so quiet charging, and that means it'll charge at a slower speed, which means the fans don't need to kick in. You have optimized battery charging, which is the one that I'm using as that's optimized for battery health and I'm in no rush to charge the device. And then you just have a slider here, so you could set that in theory to the maximum. So if we set that all the way up to the maximum, I've just heard the fans kick in and you can see that that charge time has dropped quite a bit and it's still dropping. So you have the option to charge up quickly if you like, but if you want to prolong the life of the battery, then I would recommend keeping it on the optimized charging setting. We also have the option to turn X boost on and off. Uh, that's something I'll just leave on because it's useful. And then we have some auto timeout settings here. So the overall device timeout is two hours. So if nothing's drawing power from it, it will turn off after two hours. The screen timeout, the AC timeout. So as you saw earlier, you can turn the AC and 12 volt options on individually. So that's the timeout settings for there. Firmware updates, and it looks like we are pending one. So I'll install that soon. And then some lab features. So you can do some automated tasks in here which may be useful to some. Okay, so that's now fully charged, which didn't take long at all, so really impressed with that. So the main reason we've bought this is for powering the fridge in our camper van, along with various other things, but let's test it with some high power devices and see how it copes. So let's start with this hair dryer and it's got two speed settings, so I'll put it on number one and we'll see what that drops down to and we'll put it on number two and see if you can handle the full output. So we're going to number one. So as you can see, that's now dropped down to 52 minutes. Let's put it on to max power. Okay, so that's now dropped to 31 minutes, which I don't think is bad. There's a bit of a theme going here. We've got some hair straighteners. So I was expecting that to use more power when it first started up, but it looks to be around 200 watts. You'll probably find once it gets up to temperature that'll drop down, yeah, so that's starting to drop down already. Okay, and that's on. So reassuring to know, if you need to straighten your hair for 66 hours, you can. 
So let's try something a little bit less demanding. It's my old P20 Pro. Let's try one of these USB-C ports on the front. And I need to remember to turn this bit on. Okay, so that's charging. So it does say it's charging, but it's not showing any watts on the output. Let's try something a bit more powerful on that port. Let's try a Dell laptop. So again, that's hardly drawing anything from the battery, but I guess that probably depends on what you're currently doing on the device, how fully charged it is. If this laptop was only half charged and I was running something demanding, then perhaps it would draw a few more watts, but it's fairly safe to say that if you're running something like a phone or a laptop from this battery, you're going to be able to do that for a very long time. Okay, so the sun's actually out today in the UK, which is a bit of a rarity. So before we go out and test the solar panel, let's just try this portable AC, which I believe is around a thousand watts. Let's see how it gets on. As you can probably hear, that's on the highest fan speed. It seems to be coping with that, no problem at all. So according to this, we're on 94% battery and it can power this for around seven hours. Although I've just spotted it's dropped down to two hours, which sounds more realistic. Right, let's go and check out the solar panel. So the first thing I noticed was just how heavy this thing was for its size, which does make sense as it contains a lot of glass, but still it comes in at 9.5 kilograms, which is around 21 pounds. So you're probably not going to want to carry this thing out on a hike or anything like that. As I mentioned at the start, the solar panel comes in a carry case and this case doubles as its stand. Setting the whole thing up was simple enough, it was just a case of unfolding the solar panel and attaching all four corners to the carry case using the provided carabiner clips. Other than its portability, what makes this solar panel special is the bifacial design. According to EcoFlow, this is capable of generating 220 watts from the front side and an additional 155 watts on the rear side, depending on how reflective the surface is. However, in real world usage, especially in countries like the UK, I wouldn't expect it to get anywhere near those figures, but we'll put that to the test in a moment. Once it was set up, it was just a case of connecting it to the Delta battery using the provided cable. This cable is around 2.5 meters, and once you combine it with the cable that's built into the solar panel, you should get just over three meters of cable, which is around 10 feet. You can adjust the angle of the solar panel by simply lifting it and using the zips on both sides of the case to secure it in place. After some playing around, the most I managed to get out of it was around 180 watts, which I thought was pretty impressive, and more than enough to keep the battery topped up in most use cases. Even when adjusting the panel to some non-optimal angles, including just laying it completely flat on the ground, the input still hovered around 140 to 150 watts. This will obviously vary based on things like cloud cover and time of day, but this far surpassed my expectations. So, would I recommend the EcoFlow Delta 2 and solar panel? Whilst they are quite expensive, the quality is excellent and the combination of the two has completely enhanced our camping experience. Yes, the solar stand is a little bit fiddly to get used to, but making use of the case keeps the whole setup super portable. The last couple of times we went camping, I actually just propped the solar panel against the back of the van, and combined with the Delta 2, it managed to keep our camping fridge running for five days, completely off-grid, and I'm sure it would have lasted longer if needed. So yes, I would absolutely recommend both the solar panel and the battery to anybody who's considering buying them. They've been an absolute game changer for us. If you found this useful in any way, please consider subscribing. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.